Okay, so I'm uh, today I'm very happy to introduce uh, Juan Esteban Rodriguez Mundo, who will speak of the analytic drum stack. Thank you so much, Akil, uh, for inviting me to talk in this uh, uh, this seminar this year. So uh, today's talk is going to be homology, at least uh, new geometrization of the homology appearing in this uh, new world of analytic geometry of Dalton de Fonse. So, uh, now for the talk is maybe first to recall, uh, let's say the classical construction of since one of the algebraic drama stack. The stack that on code so the models here. Uh, maybe if try to pass towards analytic geometry to motivate, motivate analytic drama stack. So motivate analytic version of this uh, algebraic construction. But the third one we give a definition. Finally, year, uh, or maybe we need some properties. So let me start with uh, the algebraic drama stack. Uh, should we start with two lengths? Stack. So this is a construction due to Simpson in the late 90s. Uh, so let X be uh, maybe register state a uh, separable, separated smooth scheme. So it's more than the right variety over C. Um, then in the 90s, late 90s, uh, Simpson defined an algebraic object that encodes the theory of D modules. What this algebraic object looks like, so the definition. So the algebraic drum stack. So let uh, maybe the ring uh, is infinite, the, the category of uh, just uh, finite type algebras. The number of rings are five type algebras. Uh, so the drama stack, right? The drama stack is a shift from uh, this category of rings, the point of this category of rings, let's say the sets sets uh, that maps uh, ring A, the points of X at the reduction of A. So A kill the It's a shift on the metal topology. Let me just take a pre shift, but it's going to be at the end a shift metal topology. Just maybe to glue. So, okay. Uh, let's say why this definition should be uh, somehow related with the rank homology of D modules. So, maybe see this, let me. Give a slightly different presentation of the same object. In this case, that this is smooth. Fraction. So, well, we have the diagonal map that is a cross inversion separated. 
that you can consider. And then call it maybe like that. This I mean just take a, a product and take the formal completion along this uh, neighbor. So this formal completion. So, so this space, which uh, concretely is described as a in the scheme, so concretely just a limit uh, of maybe the spectrum like two weeks, so divided the idea of the diagonal was the power of p, so it's just taking like this uh, uh, call limit of shifts. Uh, has the projections so first component the second component so was x and we also have this sort of yeah. so well what is this definition doing well you basically are identifying points on x that are closer that are infinitesimally close in the sense of the difference is uh, an important element here. So in other words, you are just taking this variety X and you're identifying by the equivalence relation given by this formal completion of the diagonal, just identifying points that are infinitesimally close. So the co-equalizer of this thing is precisely this graph uh, state. Uh, sorry, this is supposed to be an eye of an ideal, and this is uh, the ideal of this uh, notion. Okay, so well, this is an answer to the question of why is this related with D models. So let me sample. At least why well, at the end is going to be out to be the same, but why we can believe that this construction actually is related with differential operators. So first recall that we have a connection. So what differentials and how is this connection construct? Well, V is actually the pullback of the difference of the pullbacks from OX in other words. Maybe not uh, the whole form of completion, but at least this one divided by the DL squared. Right? So, this is the way how to break the uh, curves. You define this connection just by taking the uh, second important thickening of the diagonal, just taking the difference of the projections, of the pullbacks on the two different projections. And so, this. Maybe the second one goes back to growth indeed. Uh, it says that the datum of a vector bundle with a flat connection over X is equivalent to the following as first just a vector bundle over X. And second, well, take uh, maybe you I the projections of this uh, important thickening first important thickening here and uh, you give the data of uh, Isomorphism of the two pullbacks, the two projections, or such that this reduction modulo of the ideal of the diagonal is just uh, right? like uh, these two categories, the vector model connection, and uh, this is the same data for this uh, second thickening diagonal, the plan. It's just uh, the same thing. So actually, well, differential operators in variety X are encoded by the same datum 
in the diagram here. So it turns out actually that was the coherent shift set and this algebraic drum stack, which is just again uh, quasi coherent shifts in here, loss at the same datum given by this diagram, are the same as B modules. So, all right. So this is uh, uh, the classical the binder I'm stuck. So maybe say a couple of uh, uh, nice properties here. So let's say some advantages of the stack. The stack here. Is that well, maybe what is difficult is to relate these particular shifts with actual B models? But once you have this, so things like uh, this Kashiwara equivalence, it's trivial. So this means that if you have a close embedding of two motor varieties, then B models. Is the same as B modules, B modules over Z is the same as B modules over X that have support. So, why this? Well, the reason is that the RAM stack of this uh, uh, closed loop scheme is just the same as taking the formal completion of X at Z and taking the, the RAM stack of this one. So, apparently, just define the RAM stack for a scheme, but actually, you can just define it for any shift in this category of principles. In particular for these formal conditions. So you have this equality basically for free, and this just translates in the cache state, for example. Um, so the thing is that now you have a common framework work. B models and usual quasi coherent shifts. Namely, well, still looking at quasi coherent shifts, or maybe some more general objects, which in this case are the stacks, this category of rings, and still we manage to transform the modules over some of the right variety into quasi coherent shift, or maybe slightly more complicated, strange, or any some kind of a stack. You have to say this stack is not an nothing stack, so it's not some like smooth modulo smooth, it's just some maybe a smooth in this case, modulo some form of smooth space. Okay. So far, good questions. So So this is the classical business. Let's go now go, let's go now to the analytic business. <clears throat> Why analytic models? So okay, to motivate why we expect that such kind of theory in pure nature, let me uh, take uh, two different examples, different kind of theories that is related, uh, where this theory of analytic modules in some extent appear already in classical, uh, the classical. Okay. So well, basically we want. Theory of T modules. Or maybe I would like to say a geometric theory. That encodes 
infinite order. Differential operations. Operators. So, well, I didn't mention this, but the, the bright brown stack just uh, encodes uh, the theory of finite order differential operators. And actually, in, in, let's say, in practice, when you do analysis in the context of chemical analysis, to study sort of varieties, these shifts of infinite order differential operators would appear everywhere. This kind of operator would appear everywhere. So, let me give uh, two examples of this in two different worlds. Like the first one, let's take a complex analytic space, or maybe a real analytic space. And uh, let me pretend that this one is already a closed or so space inside different copies of N or R. It's not a here. So just take a basically an open, maybe a closed or subset of containing an open open. The closure of the closure of open set inside the CN over N, which is the, the, the unit disk, for example. Then there is a This uh, construction of the algebraic drama stack is not just for algebraic scheme, also you can extend it to let's say rigid spaces or in this case complex varieties. And basically what you will end up is with this shift of finite order differential operators. What is given by what? Well, you take the structural shift and you just have some coordinates given by derivations and log of these variables here. So basically you have So this is uh, the illusory ring of algebraic differential operators. And now, well, you want uh, So what is this shift of, uh, let's say, infinite order differential operators? So I think it was uh, Kashiwara and Sato study. Differential operators. That they call the, the infinity, S of X, uh, that in terms of these coordinates actually can be made uh, concretely described. This is just uh, uh, some kind of Frechet space. The sequences are functions like a uh, power series in this derivative of variables. Or maybe you want to normalize the alpha such that well, these guys they have a norm, let's say some maximum norm, as long as you take some bound uh, uh, in a compact space, and you want that this thing converges to zero for all. So it's like uh, the functions on the analytic affine space. So this one, if you omit this uh, variable here, this is just a power series in the a fine line, analytic fine line, complex of fine line, let's say, uh, on the variables, these differential variables, or maybe you just normalize uh, by this factorial because of the PD powers that appear everywhere in to relate differential operators with the dual. So this. This one? Little D. Little D. The dimension of the matters. Ah, sorry, it should be happy. 
Uh, so this space will look like some hyperfunctions. I think this is for the column. The variables. Another way to describe the shift, but maybe it's in a different way. This one is just the endomorphisms, those linear endomorphisms. Maybe CP or CCO are linear. Let me just for the safe continuous ones. So this is just well, this finite order differential operators you can describe it basically as endomorphisms, but uh, eventually when you apply many brackets, become zero. And this one you just take all of them and you end up. So they consider this kind of shift that okay, you could say uh, why. And uh, let me say that well, for formal reasons, once you have this kind of computation, then you can describe, uh, for example, this Riemann Hilbert correspondence in the case of complex real varieties in a just clean uh, algebraic way, just by some uh, uh, kind of adjunctions to complex. <laughs> So a second example. So let me now take uh, some ready space. Let's say over to be smooth in space. And let me assume for simplicity that I have a map who was a disk. So one. Yeah. So basically, I'm in the same set of here, but we have core planes. So again, you can control the shift of differential operators, the algebraic one, it's just the same thing. And now, add a common what I've constructed another shift. Of um, infinite order periodic differential operators that, uh, well, you can present it in different ways. So the first one is exactly in the way that is written there. The sums of functions such that uh, this one goes to zero. All are bigger than zero, but fortunately, we have a analysis. So, this one you can also describe as a space differential space given by just a theta, the theta algebra over for x, and maybe just multiply these variables like that. Uh, yeah, T1. Uh, maybe if I want to put an R. So well, these two presentations turns out to be the same, but the reason basically this factorial in the periodic evaluation just grows as logarithmically. So you can just calculate by some geometric series. So we saw that in the complex case, these variables look like these hyper functions. This can do us some analytic measures somehow. In the periodic situation, still we have the same presentation, but now the spaces look like uh, Functions, these functions, these derivatives look at functions in the analytical fine line. These are So, this, uh, well, I think different natural shifts of differential operators that appear, for instance, if you study, I don't know, like uh, local analytic representations in periodic groups. So, you will have at the end a localization theorem proved by Arakov and Wesley for certain kind of representations. In terms of these localized representations and uh, some kind of D modules, these Lika modules over flag varieties, for instance. So these ones appear everywhere in the added representation theory. Again, these ones also encode a lot of fun representation theory, but in the context of. Uh, okay, so, so just to clarify, it's very but this is this is a sheaf of this is a sheaf of rings that you can define on any smooth. Space. Yes. Okay. This is just a presentation in terms of the coordinates, but it turns out that it's independent and you just go and glue them together. 
sorry, is, is there a similar interpretation as endomorphisms? And... That's a very good question. Uh, in general, not, but there is a paper of Arakov and Roth. Uh, sorry, what is the content out of this? But they proved that under the hypothesis that the field is large enough, and large enough is actually large enough, very large. I mean, <laughs> like CP is not large enough. Maybe even the spherical completion of CP is not large enough. You actually need to be even larger. Uh, then it's true at the level of uh, on space. Let me say that this one is actually true, if I remember correctly, in the right level. So this one, you just take the endomorphisms, which actually maybe can just erase continuous here and it's still true. And you can take the right version and it's still true. But in the periodic version, they only prove it, let's say, for the abelian level. But still, you need to be over a very large, very large. Field. So can I ask a basic question about the notation? Yep. So, so, so yeah, this limit is the, uh, the way it's written, D1 no. doesn't seem to be contained there. What? So does D1 itself lie in this limit? D1? What is D1? Well, just a single differential operator. Del T1. Yeah, you're saying you're required, you only take. Yeah. P is in the recording. Oh, P is in the I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I understand. Okay, so now it's a question that hopefully is going to be asked when we talk. So, well, in the previous, we saw that we have the theory of the right D models, and somehow there is a nice geometric space that encodes this theory is just a question of shifts. So, the question, the first one, is, that, is there Geometric spaces. Use the Rama such that quasi coherent shifts on X the Rama are the same as either D cap or infinity models in a suitable sense. Let me be a little bit vague in the question. And the second one is there. An uniform construction of us. Right, like, okay, is there, I would find such a kind of realization, maybe in analytic geometry. And is the realization like a particular for the periodic or the complex numbers? Or actually, there is a kind of just the same construction that works for both setups. Just, you just change QP by C, but it's the same construction. So. So, um, right. So, let's see more reasons. One is stuck. So, maybe the first one is that theory using the, the RAM stack, it's very difficult to see, uh, well, the T structures on. The, the purpose is structure on D modules, unless you actually use the, the certifications in you provide the X. But well, there should be a way to just see this purpose is structure directly from an incarnation of the drum stack itself. Just to forget about certifications, it should be just a suitable definition of the drum stack, which also sees the purpose is structure itself. So let's say I want to see purpose. Structures using X the RAM. Particularly, you have these three structures and you were able to see some parameter models. So, maybe another one and most important reason to want to have this stack. So, I would have us want a six hundred for analytic modules. So well, let's say uh, let's go to Rosenblum. They have six frontals for this uh, at the right D modules in setup. Uh, but these D modules are some kind of these six frontals are kind of twist in a weird way. Uh, it turns out that there is a way to also construct the modules in using this analytic geometry. Uh, that uh, let's say we correct uh, the we give the, the correct twister when you think about concrete writing D models. So 
Uh, let's Say maybe with the X why is smooth? You want something like the clock and RAM. You want this one just to be uh, the pullback pumper, tensor, some dualizing shift. And actually, because of the regressions, we actually would like this dualizing shift to be just the trivial right? shifted by two. Maybe with some hodge weight that I just ignore here. But this doesn't happen with the algebraic uh, stack, with the algebraic stack. Have that well, this one, just this one. Maybe on the assumption that is proper. So this twist is like not uh, the correct one. <coughs> okay. So let me now go to definition. So recall that for X, uh, let me just take care of trivial characteristic zero. We define a smooth separable the drama stack, but you write the drama stack in two different ways. So either as a functor in this category, compared to X of the reduced ring, or this one. Was some quotient equalizer of this over convergent diagonal. So this from a completion of the diagonal. So well, the question is which uh, kind of presentation to use to define this an ideal RAM style. It turns out that uh, this one can actually make sense. It's in both complex and and a uh, rigid geometry, let's say a version of this one that actually is going to encode what we want. And for now, this one, you can also make sense, let's say, to be safe working at least in a uh, uh, rigid geometry, this first definition. So let me call this uh, uh, one. So well, to keep again the analogy, uh, to devote the complex on the uh, rigid uh, stacks. Let me use first the second one, and then I want to talk a little bit about the first uh, quite constructed. So first, uh, just, uh, okay. So again, let's take X uh, to be uh, some analytic space of uh, complex real numbers or some rigid space. Uh, or QP or some field of like a field of this characteristic. Uh, then, well, we still can consider the diagonal map. So this product here. And well, for the algebraic one again, I repeat, uh, we just consider problem completion of the diagonal map. But since you are doing an analysis, analytic geometry, you still you can talk about norms. In functions, right? So, in particular, you can define some different space that is naturally attached to the diagonal map. And if I a variant, and it's a mythic variant. Of this formal completion. How to do this? Well, this is a series of close of space, in particular, defines an actual close of space along the line of topological spaces. So you can define uh, some shift of overconverging functions in this diagonal map just by taking the co limit of all the open subspaces 
containing x containing the product of functions inside the so this is just taking over convergent functions of the diagonal inside the product. So well, once you do this, of course, this is not longer a tape ring or maybe something a complex algebra may approach space like this. It's some weird or maybe not too weird, still can be made in such a way that it's a column of banach spaces even by compact transition maps. But certainly it's not longer defining an attic space in any ways. But still, even so, uh, it's not a big ring, for example. But still, analytically. So, Analytic ring in the sense of uh, condensed mathematical clause in the So, still is defining a perfectly well defined space just by taking the spectrum of this ring in this category of analytic rings. If still defines analytic space, which is given by, let me just call it uh, as this over convergent variable. This is going to be some kind of spectrum, maybe relative to this product of these algebra functions. Similar to what happened with the my completion as a relative spectrum of the formal functions here. Then you can define the following. A little bit of stack. X is given by, well, yeah. I'm going to write a formula. And I want to say in which sense this one of these formula makes sense. So, so you have the two projections of the diagonal, which compose the product and project of the two variables. And you always have the diagonal in your sense. And you can still take the co-equalizer of this diagram here. The question where? Well, you take this co-equalizer as analytic stacks. Maybe again, this is just pre-shifts of analytic rings. Maybe in something larger that says, which is just this category of spaces or this category of simply as a set of this category of animal. Sorry, I, uh, do, do you in this do, do you want to take a co-equalizer or like a geometric realization? I actually want a geometric realization, but let me just call it co equalizer for that. <laughs> this definition, uh to be after it or quasi doing some quasi compact no 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 this can be everything yes well, everything as long as it's both just for now for this one to be smooth is this something is this something one can do whenever you have a closed uh your rigid space and you have a closed subspace yep you can do this over convergence yes so this over convergence so construction again as I could say uh you can do it whenever you have a Inversion of bridge spaces, you still can consider like functions that over converge in the big one or the close one, and still define an analog of what this uh, for my completion along this closed superspace would be, which is just this function of the, 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 the space defined by this over convergent function. So it's like the same construction, but we're changing for my completion by over convergence. So, do you have any analog? Do you have the analog of what you did earlier when you said? When we have a closed in right in, in the classical setting when you had a closed z inside z inside x, then the you, you get to compare and you compare you know, z with the formal completion along it. Mm -hmm. You got the same Dirac stack. Yes. Is something like that here? Yes, exactly the same thing. Um, uh, 
couple of reasons why, well, I just gave you a construction, but now we need to argue why is this related with these D models that I just mentioned before, right? So this computation show that. Again, we took this uh, the RAM stack, which is a say neutralization or just the quotient of this guy by this equivalent relation. In particular, uh, uh, you still have a map from X to what the RAM stack, right? Which was given by the quotient from this. Case. So you have a function like this. And again, over this one, you can define uh, like quasi-coherent shifts. Let me call it a uh, quasi solid or I don't know, liquid, some kind of completed quasi coherent shift depending on the kind of analytic geometry you're doing, Archimedean or maybe non Archimedean, which again is just given by the same formula before. So you have uh, some quasi coherent shift in X and you have some descent data when you pull back towards this phase. So again, it's just given by descent data. Should be X to run? Yeah, that formula would be better with X to run. <laughs> no, about the definition of. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, so again, this is just defined by some kind of descent data. Well, imagination is that. So, well, you can compute actually the dual of the push forward pullback of OX. case and well depending what you are this one side gives you either the infinity in the case of the complex spaces or it gives you precisely the cup in the case of regenerative spaces again this is an explicit computation again just arises by the fact that somehow this diagonal should encode of differential operators but this time since you take the over version of it then these differential operators has some major convergence conditions attached to them but this thing just formally is the same by adjunction as maps in the Durham stack of the push forward of this plane. So this is just the endomorphisms of the ring, which is given by the algebra push the push forward of the uh, unit here and here. So just by abstract nonsense or just a categorical reasons. Then we can put the reasons. You always have a map from let's say whenever you take with an affine to take algebra, so actually modules of this algebra cut, you can localize it. Quasi-coherent, solid liquid. Again, as long as you have a such a kind of thing, an object in your category which is going to be stable category, uh, symmetric model in a stable category, you get an endomorphism of an object. You can always just from abstract modules of these things, you can just construct a formally a Models in this category just by uh, taking some kind of tangent. So the subscript means that, like, when you're doing Archimedean things, you always take liquid, and then yes, not Archimedean, you always take solid. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe because of this, I should change uh, liquid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, you can do this one as well with liquid. But, uh, it's only the uh, surfaces. Okay, so the source category here is modules over this inside quasi coherent sheaves on X. Or, sorry? The source category is modules over the sheaf of algebra so inside the quasi coherent sheaves on X. Uh, right, that's a good question. So, yes, so in particular, this uh, object in here can define a sheaf of functions in your space X, some, sorry, some, some ring sheaf in your respect X. And you can just take uh, like modules uh, 
let's say, solid modules with a ring structure, with a module structure of a DC of rings over the module space. And they took a local like this. And so secretly on the lock board, home was also local, internal and not local. Uh, yes. yes. So, so everything is right. But for this one, a good question. Uh, I think for this one is the right, yes. I think for this one it's okay for the drive. Uh, I think home. I, I think so. Let, let me know what uh, I think it's, it's also the right. Yes. To be okay. Uh, also, how do you define right hand side? It's just totalization of this initial diagram or you take linear over all this one? Analytic spaces, maybe. Yes. Uh, I mean, a priori, you just have a diagram because I haven't give you the definition you seen as a shift. So just take uh, descent along this diagram. Yeah, right. The geometric realization, the totalization of the category yeah. models. You know, descent under this. Right? I mean, it's not a priori clear that this quasi, I don't know, for me, it's not clear that quasi co satisfies descent for this sort of map. But I mean, as long as you can write uh, your stack just as a I don't know, geometric realization of something, as a co limit of something, and you look in this co limit as. Yeah, but you need to know that this thing is a couple. Okay, I mean. No, no, because the, I mean, in this situation, I define this as this quotient. So it seems I define it as this quotient. I think it's just formal that uh, it's going to have a. Uh, let me okay okay maybe let, let, let me go for these things <laughs> okay so i gave you this uh, definition and at least i tell you why this object is actually related with these complete modules because of this computation uh, but okay, like apparently you only have this kind of localization map. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? So it turns out that yes, we can say a little bit more about this. Let's say that depending for your Archimedean or non Archimedean, you can say different things. So let me try this first say the non Archimedean. So again, let me assume that we have a map about the disk. Uh, such that well, this guy again was kind of a limit h or x of these state algebras. Let me call me well, this one just a uh, type of n of x. Then, uh, well, actually. We can describe precisely what this category of quasi coherent shift is in terms of this modus solid model of these algebra. So, this is a theorem that uh, we don't work with uh, Joaquin Rodriguez Jacinto. So this is not me, this is me. So, the difference is that S and Z. That's actually this category of quasi coherent shifts. Something else is the Raman. It's just the same as the limit of the category of modules, okay, solid modules, just solid over QP of this. So, again, what integral is speaking, what is telling you to you? Well, this looks like functions in some disk of radius p to the h. On the variable differential variables, and basically these quasi coherent shifts are just quasi coherent functions on this non commutative uh, Stein space along this non commutative variable scale. So, this is a very let's say, clean relation of these quasi coherent shifts in the RAM stack with uh, actual D models. Over the complex. Uh, For the complex, uh, well, at least I don't know this. Uh, what, what is the precise localization of this category? So let me maybe say that the category here is not the same as the category in here. There is some weird uh, localization that you kill some kind of the boundary. These are uh, fine space. So this one is smaller than this one. Oh, than, yeah, than this one. 
on this one maybe. In the real complex framework. Uh, and Schultz, eh? Realize the following. You have X, you have analytic space over C over the reals. Let's say again, it's more fun. Okay. Um, and over this guy, oh, you can lie just to see X, uh, let's say just a uh, as a topological space, maybe a condensed set, with maybe a sheaf of complex locally constant points. So this space is actually going to define a, somehow a, a top an analytic stack. Just from basically by taking this space of local control function, maybe by doing some descent and sets, but this is going to define analytic stack. And it turns out that B is the RAM stack, it's basically the same as this topological space. Let's say uh, for some, uh, for some sort of. So this drama stack, as related with D modules by this nonsense, is actually the same as the polygon space. Let me say what this actually means at the level of categories. This means that This particular of quasi coherent shifts, the beta over X ram, which again is just the center from the diagram that is there, is just the same as a linear group. So I don't know how to write this. The shifts are in the topological space, just in what the category maybe of uh, complex vector space, complex vector spaces. And maybe by complex vector spaces, I actually mean. Uh, this category of liquid complex vector spaces. So just a quasi-coherent shift, as you would define it, using the same of quasi-coherent complexes or quasi-coherent shifts on X, so this okay, the reference. <laughs> the complex around the situation is just giving for you topological shifts. So maybe a way to sell this is that this is a geometric version of the Riemann Hilbert correspondence. Just the models is the same as topological shifts. But usually in Riemann Hilbert correspondence, there are these conditions, right? On the uh, regular synthesis. So yes. You don't need to. They kind of disappear. And yes. really let, let's say that the difficulties in code and describing this in terms of actual D infinity models. Ah, this category should be some weird localization of the category of all of these D infinity models that I told you that it's not just by power series in variables, differential variables, but you actually have some kind of um, PD power series or some kind of factorial there. Uh, still, you have D modules, you can extend them to D infinity modules and you can localize it in this category. And this we're going to produce for you for free a uh, topological shift, but in the case of vector bundles, the hypothesis you want is giving you the, the correct for that. This is always the right category, uh, always the uh, infinite categories. Sorry. So on the right hand side, X top means this analytic stack, or it just means this space X on the left? Both of them are giving you for the same. Category of dimensions. Yes, you can think about the issue of topological space with the shifts or just this weird stack there. It's just the same category of shifts. So we continue. Stone page. So this construction was used in the second uh, definition that involved just taking quotient by diagonals, but 
the construction one. So I recall that it was a algebraic theorem of R is a mix of R reduced. Let's say to define this is the RAM stack. So let's say at least a generic median. So this is not because uh, it's not true over the liquid. So just because uh, well, it will be more much more difficult to do it over the liquid as, as usual. But over the North median star or the solid rings, you can actually make this construction. I mean, and, uh, which means uh, I know to do this construction. So broadly speaking, since we don't have uh, much time, so first you need to replace uh, this category of rings, which were just. Uh, Finite type of the Omega algebra over C by some weird category, some very weird category of finite rings, maybe not all of them, but something that uh, I like calling uh, uh, C doesn't have a name, but uh, it looks like it's having a formal name, category of bounded analytic rings. So, roughly speaking, just uh, your name. Then instead of this definition, just tell you what properties of this category is. So you allow things like uh, a algebra. This is like any function has a norm somehow and has bounded norm in a suitable sense. We can also allow some kind of co-limits, for example, this co-limit. Like over converging functions around zero of the hand space. Again, these are just uh, functions that over converge at zero. So, of course, they have norm basically zero. Or maybe just the norm depends only on the constant coefficient. But not something like a polynomial algebra T. The variable T is not bounded. There is no way to do periodic, uh, I don't know, to construct a power series involving. Coefficients of p going to zero using variable p. You can it's not power bound. Just only allow this power series here. So this theorem of here is some generalization of uh, analytic usual set of analytic Uber rules. So this means uh, basically you have a data algebra basically this depends on kind of a couple here such that you can define some power bounded elements which basically are just element in a such that uh, Whenever you have a, well, you consider the polynomial map of this, this, and you want to say that it's power bounded, so you can say basically that this extends to the theta algebra. The powers of T are uniformly bounded by one. And A is just uh, the power bounded elements divided by the T. So basically, uh, you can think of this like uh, this one is kind of a open, but it's not open. This one, and that everything is up to some power of p, actually a bounded function. Uh, so, okay, maybe I'm just going to finish with this. Okay, sorry. sorry. This category. Have a, a new new radical definition. Dagger new radical. Basically, you can 
defining as all the functions that have norm equal to zero. So you can say in sense of a norm of a function because of the equation that it was right there, and you are taking all the functions that have norm equal to zero. And it turns out that this is the rubber stack. Again, it's just a shift. It's a category of ultimate rings. It's one with ultimate rings. One amount, three sets. But takes a bounded algebra and you, well, take something that I call the dagger reduction of this. And this one again, as you can imagine, just this one divided the is dagger in the right code. So, with this definition, of course, this one is not particular to rigid spaces. You can extend it for very basically any kind of stacks constructed from these rings. Uh, and using this formalism, you can prove formally, let's say, this Kashiwara equivalence of D module supported on uh, uh, no, uh, just a closed loop space and D modules of the closed loop space itself. You can construct the six functor formalism for D modules using that, such that for any map of uh, rigid spaces, you have strict functors and the smooth maps to have the correct uh, dualize and shift. Uh, and something that is surprising here, since it's a short remark, is that actually the construction of the drum stack, similar as the complex construction, only depends, at least for rigid spaces, on the underlying diamond of this thing. So actually, you can construct this stack just for perfect spaces, and for this one, you can descend it to rigid spaces themselves. And actually, it's giving you this, the same answer. So in some sense, this analytic drum stack is something depending purely on the topology, some sense of X, which in the topology in this situation means just math from perfect spaces. And I think I just went confused. I'm sorry for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? So, so you just said this depends only on the underlying diamond. Yes. Like, is it the, like, like, can you elaborate? Like, is it? Yes. Is it sure is like is the C, C is like, 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 I will directly define this. Let me. So this is this a statement I'm not going to prove. This is something that uh, I can show you. Let me for now just assume that X is uh, smooth. Maybe you can just get rid of this uh, definition. So you can define, well, take uh, a perfectoid over in the product outside uh, as X. You can think of this as maybe the torus, and this is the perfect torus in here. And then you can define the drama stack by using this formula. So I'll give you there for these two guys. So it turns out that this one is going to be a cover. Maybe in a suitable topology of this set, suitable vehicle. It's actually this one. In the center of uh, okay. And actually, if you do the fiber product, this guy, so of course, if it's a cover, you can recover this space by the check nerve. So you don't need to take this. So this one is just for take the diagonal cover, maybe of the over the diamond, which is still a perfect of the space if you take it over the diamond. So in particular, this is telling you that, well, this space can be recovered just from map of these perfect spaces under a perfect equivalence relation after you apply this drama stack here. So in this sense, it is independent. It just depends on the diagram. So like it actually is a, like it can be extended to a functor from the category of B-sheets? Uh, I mean, maybe you, you, you can certainly construct the functor from pre sheet from perfect spaces. You can tell the maximal kind of topology for which you have descent for the post shifts. This may not coincide with the V topology, but still you have plenty of models that are descent there. But the, you, you can make a sense, you can make sense of this construction maybe using this overconverging diagonal, 
a tener los vistos. Pues. Uh, it says we are something in the sky here for the perfectoid. From the perfectoid, uh, uh, it's as easier as describing S by approximating by the radius spaces. So, so I was wondering uh, if you take like a two metal group of the diagonal inside the product of two B sheets attached to a Zampiatic formal scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I assume you are your X actually formalizing. And then if you take a, a two metal group in a sense of game three, and then you use. This uh, as a replacement of the formal conclusion of the diagonal to to like uh, to, to to define the equivalence relation is something reasonable. Um, so I think the construction you have in mind is something that let's say Peter uh, I don't know, mentioned to me in Bonn uh, uh, some months ago. Uh, whenever you have a Let's say FP formal scheme, or maybe a problem scheme, just a FP scheme from scheme. You can from this construct a diamond. And then from the diamond, you can construct this drum stack. Well, maybe you need a diamond plus an tilt just to pick a mass to keep it. And from this one, you can construct a, a drum stack or this diamond here. I don't know if it's actually giving you the same answer for you, but at least this is a way to, let's say, just uh, construct uh, using diamonds and this drum stack, like QP coefficients for some kind of. Commodity or FP of open schemes. Uh, this is something that Peter had, uh, I think, been working on that. I don't know exactly what, but uh, in the case of perfect toilet, is this as the RAM more explicit? Or? This is what uh, yeah. Yesha asked. Yes, so let me maybe just uh, tell you what I know that you can do. So the formation of the drum stack should commute with limits. So as long as S is maybe just the limit. Of uh, let me just we call that both to be easy. We use smooth bridge spaces. I know, for instance, like uh, perfect doors, if in the levels of varieties, stuff like this. Then this guy is just the limit of this guy. <laughs> it's not, but it's telling you that the RAM commodity of this one is just the core limit of the RAM commodity of this one. So we don't complete everything? We don't complete. This one is kind of decompleting the, the RAM commodity. Yes. They completed the diameter. Again, this somehow is just kind of the political shift in a suitable sense. So the only should depend on the, it should not depend on the functions themselves, but just on the topological space, this, the stack. Mm -hmm. So you explained this uh, Riemann Hilbert correspondence uh, in the NL complex analytic setting. I was wondering, you said it's an isomorphism of stacks. I was mm -hmm. wondering, is, is that something that you see by looking at functors of points on analytic rings or things? This actually is something very funny. And, and basically, the reason why you have this on top of stacks, yeah, this is the computation that Peter and Dustin explained to me. Uh, so. Something quite simple, but it's still it's a wonderful remark. So, you take some complex analytic space, you can look at the con locally constant functions, this guy, and you can compute the distance of the Of course, compute in the equal world. And if you compute it, well, you just get uh, these uh, functions of this over convergent diagonal here. Basically, the way you compute it, you take an affinoid, affine scheme, and you create just two tensors of this uh, affine scheme. But, but since you take in arbitrary small open neighborhoods, you end up just with the diagonal. So as long as this algebra is descendable over this algebra, you will get for free that just modules over this is data, which is modules over this ring, which is just topological shifts. So the, the, the subscript means liquid P. It's 
So it's sendable. Thank you, bro. Well, basically, by concurrent. Right, concurrent name might just give you a specific solution to the same as you draw functions. So, voila. Right. So, it's telling you that, again, by concurrent lemma, you are able to descend module from this one to distance of product. And as long as you make complete distance of product, it's just this over conversion diagonal. So, it's just telling you that this descent relation is the same that you get from this idle bound stack. That's why you actually get equivalence of, of stars. So how do you see this isomorphism? This one? Yes. Uh, so over u, let's say you take u, take a point. It's enough to take a level of stacks. I think you have a map from this tensor to the one downstairs. And what is the stack? X. So it's just a co limit of O of U, tensor O of U over locally constant functions, so you over C, because we can take U to be connected. So this is just a of U cross U. So well, this is just a, the diagonal and the stars are its coins. So that you have an actual map with that. Yeah. So, so if no more questions, let's thank the uh, one.